Hello boys, it's it's time. The International Booker Prize has been announced, celebrating the best works written from uh, South America from the perspective of women. Uh, seems to be the uh, seems to be what the award is celebrating now. <laughs> so the list of thirteen books came out. I've seen other people uh, review it and. Their opinions are basically like, what the fuck are these? I've never heard of them. When I watched it, I went, oh, Maurice Conde has released a book. What is that title? And then I had no idea what the rest of them were. No, no fucking clue. So this was a little, a little bit of a fun topic for me because I had no idea where to start. But the first one I reviewed was the first one that came across my hands, which was the book Boulder which is also, I believe, the shortest one on the list, and it, it looks like it has to be the shortest one that's ever been on this fucking list. It's tiny! It's barely a hundred pages, it barely counts as a fucking book. So the book Boulder is written by Eva Baltazar, uh, I believe she's a Catalan author, uh, and it's the story of a woman who is a, a, a sailor, um, she's a cook who works on a ship, and she falls in love with an islander woman called Samza, um, and Samsa decides, once they've settled down in Iceland, that she wants to have a kid, and the main character's like, uh... So I enjoyed this book for the most part. Um, if we're comparing it to other books from, say, last year, I definitely enjoyed it more than, like, half of those. It's better than Cursed Bunny, it's better than fucking Heaven, uh, it's better than a lot of those books. Um, and it, it was a good, it was a good opener. Uh, it's very short, it's not complicated, it's not too demanding. This book is incredibly horny. It's not uh, it's not always in a disgusting way, like um, Fernando Melco's Paradise. That's a great fucking book. Uh, and it's it, that's like gotta be the most disgustingly horny book I've ever read. But this is this is pretty bad at points. Um, and the whole point is about this woman who's this sort of free spirit and she loves being sort of an outcast and a, and a, and a a bit of a loner and she likes she likes working in, in um, crazy environments and then she's kind of forced into domesticity and tamed a little bit by her lover, her wife, when she has a kid. The book is written with these incredibly elaborate, um, ridiculous metaphors. It's a metaphor, see? Uh, it gets so um, overbearing at points, <laughs> the, um, the, the sort of the, the style of it. And it's just constant, like every fucking scene, there's uh, some new elaborate metaphor or something, something crazy, um, some, some crazy piece of writing that, that is, is, um, borderline, um, aggressive. <laughs> it has this really, uh, turbulent, visceral opening of the main character traveling through, I believe it was called the Sea of Chiloe. It does a great job of establishing her kind of, like, animalistic, free-spirited nature through her environment, where she's working as a chef on a, on a boat and she is just kind of like a, 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 a bit of a crazy person. Uh, and her environment is also incredibly uh, turbulent and, and insane as well. It reminded me about five pages in of Hurricane Season, the other Fernando Melkor book, just in terms of like the really fast moving prose and the, and the powerful choices of metaphor like on every page. When she immediately becomes obsessed with uh, the love of Samza, the, the choices of like, um, metaphor to combine her obsession with that person over, like, her job as a chef were, like, immediately disgusting. My fingers enter her as I gut the lamb. That was a good line. That, that, that I think is quite a universal experience. Who among us has, has not gutted the lamb and felt that before? It was, it was, it was very, um, it was, it was very powerfully uniting in that way. There were a few moments in the book where the amount of, like, uh, romantic sort of uh, embellishment became almost cringe. And then the author or the translator would just use one particular word that I wasn't expecting, and it would just kind of save the whole the whole quote or the whole paragraph. Maybe love is unfurling above us like an enormous branch that bends and touches all the most sensitive, reticent parts of us. So that sentence is pretty cringe until the author says reticent, and it's just not the word that you're expecting. And it kind of rounds the sentence out, and it makes it flow a little better, and it just and it just improves everything. And so if you're gonna write. Um, this kind of annoyingly uh, schmaltzy kind of writing, at least in the first half, then including words like that or phrasing it like that is a good way of doing it. The setting of the book at the beginning of the ship is just so, like, redolent and vivid and, like, apocalyptic, <laughs> um, which I really enjoyed. And then, of course, 
once it settles down, a lot of the description of the environment kind of disappears and it narrows in on the person um, who, is the, who is the lover who has the kid. Occasionally the book will teeter over into being slightly melodramatic in that first half. I say slightly, I'm, I, that's an understatement. Um, but er, there's, there's, there are still some quotes that are very cringe. One that stood out to me was, When Samza straddles me, breast thrust up at the night like coastlines, <laughs> the candlelight casts her reflection on the water, and I feel like I'm a galleon on the verge of shipwreck, like she is my figurehead. And for whatever reason, I was reminded of that movie Tulip Fever. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Um, where, where Christoph Waltz and Alicia Vikander marry, and Christoph Waltz, uh, like, they keep fucking, and Christoph Waltz is yelling out these ridiculous things while they do, like, Oh, sound the cannons, oh, fuck, I'm gonna blow. <laughs> and I was just reminded of that. <laughs> like, it's, I don't know why I'm thinking of this, I'm reading this Catalan book, and I'm just thinking about Christoph Waltz getting his mind absolutely blown by the robot from Ex Machina. Uh, <laughs> After they buy the house and settle down by about page like 30 or 40, the book settles into a, into more of a rhythm and whether you like the rhythm is kind of dependent on whether you like the book or not. It's kind of like occasional interludes and it's a lot of tell don't show, but that's just the the, the style of it. It's coming from this person who likes to tell <laughs> and it's 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 because it's so uh, intensely first person from this like crazy person's perspective. Of course, it's going to be told on show. But it'll it'll just go into interludes of like, ah, oh, now now we're going to a fertility clinic. Oh, now I'm I'm at the bar and I'm and I'm seeing all these other hot women, but I'm thinking about my wife. And you know that's that's just kind of the way it, it moves from there. And it doesn't and it doesn't waver from that. I would have liked it if the book didn't insist on the point it was making, at, like kind of near the beginning. Um, there's a couple of lines that don't need to be in the book that annoyed me. I think at one point she literally says, I feel like I've regressed. And like, we can see that. She doesn't have to say that she feels like she regressed. Like, that's, that's obvious. That's what, that's what is happening. And then there's another line where she says, um, I feel like I'm being tamed, like how a farmer tames a wolf. And then right after that line, it smash cuts to them having like really wild animal sex. And I'm like, okay, well that's not particularly subtle, like you can kind of, <laughs> you can back off a little bit. The book reminded me, just, just in terms of what it's talking about, uh, it reminded me of Autobiography of Red, the Anne Carson book, um, because it's kind of like about these really grandiloquent, um, uh, epic characters just kind of being forced into normal life a little bit. That's kind of what Autobiography of Red is about, right? God, I am a pussyless individual. <laughs> I've seen the book compared to an ancient epic, I think that's in the description of it, and it makes sense because both of the emotional states that the main character's torn between are, are also very big and epic, and it's kind of about the combat between the two, so it makes sense for it to be described like that. But, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes it, was, it, was, it was dragging a little bit for me, and sometimes the writing felt very forced. Um, not all the time, no, it, maybe 10% of the time. Let's, let's be generous. She talks about repetitive thoughts and her job and how she feels about other women, but it doesn't really creep in the way that it should in a narrative like this with the interlude style. It, it kind of just uh, is immediate, like she's immediately thinking about other women, she's immediately like disgusted at the idea of having a child. It's not, it's not paced out, it just kind of is immediately into it. Um, and that might just be a consequence of the book's length. But even so, it, it, it threw me a little bit that I was like, oh, is that, is that literally going to be it? And then it was for like 70 pages. That, like, the, the conflict was the conflict the whole time. It didn't evolve into that. It just started that way. Having said that, there's a certain point where the book, after they decide on having the kid, and just after the kid is born, the book just goes. Like, it, it's one of the fastest reading experiences I've ever had. Not just in terms of it being short, but just because it, your, your eyes glide over the page. They don't halt. It's not a hard read at all. It's just a really quick, like, you can fucking turn it like... Yeah, you could just, you could just read it in like two seconds. Um, and still retain all of it from it. I can't say that I speed read this. I was reading it and still getting everything out of it that it wanted me to, but it was just a really quick read because it was well written. It has been edited to death. Like it's it's well drafted, um, and you're you're easy. It's it's so easy to read. It got pretty funny at just how much the main character did not want to have a fucking kid. The end of one of the chapters is what's the quote? The eyes open. It's a girl. She looks at me. I feel myself die a little. That was a good line. <laughs> I was also shocked by how much of the second half of the book was just the main character being, like, unable to not. 
uh, I was very able to relate to that. Uh, that was a very relatable premise. She'll be talking about, oh, the baby is, is excited to feed the ducks. We're going to ride down our bikes and we're going to feed the ducks. And then it'll cut to, I haven't nutted in months. I can feel the pain creeping in. <laughs> it starts to get into these motions of elaborate metaphor after elaborate metaphor and the conflict remains the same throughout the whole second half and it's a short book so that didn't bother me too much but my eyes were on focusing a little bit by the end. I wasn't entirely for it. Um, I still like it, I still think it's good and it's definitely um, pretty unique. I, I, really, I really appreciate books that don't overstay their welcome and this book doesn't. That's like a major thing for me. Um, because I'm such a shit reader, <laughs> but I, I really, I really need a book to not overstay its welcome for me to like it, and then this book doesn't. It's very uh, quick and clean, um, although not clean in uh, the, the other family-friendly sense, because this book is actually horny to the point of being kind of disgusting. It doesn't hit the levels of Paradise, that's on another fucking level, but this book still has a couple of lines that made me go, oh, what the fuck? I stare at her still tanned legs and at the firm round ass I'd held open so many times, softening and stroking every nerve. Uh, that was, that was memorable. There's a moment where the mother, uh, comes while the baby is sucking her titty. That was also memorable. Uh, and I, and I just sort of stopped myself and I went, wow, I'm really, I'm really working out for this channel. I'm really, I'm really, <laughs> for the sake of this YouTube channel, I'm really pushing myself to the, to where no man has gone before. To be fair, that second bit about the woman coming, that comes at a point where the main character is viewing the woman as, like, this kind of other figure that's, like, abhorrent to her at this point because she used to love her and find her hot and now she doesn't. And so that was an appropriately disgusting moment, but it was indeed foul. <laughs> I thought it was going to end more dramatically. I was thinking of the discomfort of evening, where there's this kind of, like, um, tension in the family that runs through the whole thing. And I mean, the discomfort of evening still kind of ends on an anticlimax, but it feels like it's earned because there's so much, uh, kind of awful stuff that happens before that point. But this book also ends with a bit of an anticlimax, and I liked it initially. I was like, wow, that's actually quite, that's quite, uh, sort of powerful and a, a sweet, interesting way to end it. And then after a while, I felt kind of sour on it because it didn't reward how magnanimous the rest of the prose was for it to just kind of end with, yeah, we're splitting family time and I'm, I'm working as a cook again. <laughs> it was like, okay, like, was that it? All right, cool. Uh, you didn't want to have a kid. There we go. Um, of course, I'm, I'm oversimplifying and I'd love to see other people's interpretation of this, especially people who would really love it. But I, I was kind of just thrown by a, a, how little it tried to do. It's not a particularly ambitious book, um, but that's not necessarily at a detriment to it. Still, the first half was pretty great, and overall I do like the book, even if it gets less engaging as it goes along. I was torn between a 6 and a 7 for most of it, but I think I'll give it a 6. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I still like it. Um, I get the feeling that half of these books aren't going to be better than this. So, there we go, we're starting off on a high note. Next, I'm going to read the, uh, probably the Maurice Cond book or maybe Stillborn, I haven't decided. I don't know if I want to get straight into another oh, I don't want to have kids book, because like, how many, how many different fucking ways can you say it? Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you there watching at home get plenty of chances to nut in the future. Um, and yeah, give this one a read. Uh, tell me down in the comments if you thought it was any good. And I'll be reviewing more of these and I'll be reacting to the short list that comes out in a month's time. So, thank you very much.